Uh, I've been in Calgary now for over 15 years and been going to the same church now for seven, eight years. Pastor Craig told me once, he said, because uh, I was helping out with the ushering, like I was the head usher and stuff, and he said, if you take care of the needs of the local church, God will take care of your needs. And so I took that as, okay, look, if I'm single right now, I'm gonna spend time serving, I'm gonna spend time volunteering, I'm gonna give of myself, you know, I'm gonna make myself available to God. And so when the right time comes, then he'll make myself available to my future wife, right? My journey was um, also full of waiting. Um, I, I think I didn't date for about seven years um, after just building my relationship with Jesus. And um, I was waiting on the, the right one in a way or just didn't want to spend my time wasted um, on the wrong people. My focus at that time was just my relationship with God. So that was one thing that I told God, I'm just like, hey Lord, I'm not interested in a relationship right now. My main focus is my relationship with you. When the time is right, bring the right girl into my life. But until then, I'm happy being single. Because my motto was, I don't want to just date girls. Like I want the next girl that I date to be my wife. For me, going to the same church for that many years, um, you, you notice when a new girl it joins the church. He was ushering and uh, I look back and then I double took because <laughs> I was like, oh, who's that? Yeah, I was greeting and um, he walked, he walked by me. He came out of the women's bathroom <laughs> with a plunger in his hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He walks by, he walks by me and he's like, they don't pay me enough for this around here. Yeah. That was when I was exposed to his sense of humor and I thought he was funny. <laughs> and it was interesting how it all worked out because I'm in ushering and that's where she noticed me. Yeah. And then that's kind of where we started crossing paths and then that's when I started talking to her. Yeah. And it's just something like that, just something simple like that where I, would, God would meet my needs at the right time and for you it was the right time and he brought us both together and it was just um, it was just really nice it, was, yeah. it just really worked out you know every time I just see her like whether I was ushering or whatever I would just look at her and I get this beautiful smile I'm like that looks like a really nice pretty girl so I think I remember asking my leader Holly <laughs> I was like, so, um, there's this guy at church. <laughs> he seems really solid. <laughs> so when I asked her, um, she had nothing but amazing things to say about Riel, and she confirmed that he was single. She started taking her parents to church, and so that's when I clued in, okay, she must be single. She's always there just with her parents. There's no guy ever with her. And I think you are waiting for me to say introduce hi. myself. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> she was waiting for the guy to do his part and uh, break the ice, and so I finally built up enough courage to go do that and introduce myself to her. Yeah. From there, it, we just were a little more intentional hanging out, and mm -hmm. and then that's when, you know, probably, what, year and a half, two years of friendship. So that's kind of how we met. Yeah. Yeah. I started to realize, okay, this girl has substance. This girl, I mean, we have a lot in common uh, spiritually, uh, just even even like so stories that we would share and you know, upbringing and just different things. We just really connected. And so for me, I'm just like, this is good. This is good. Let's see where this goes. You know, I want to develop the friendship. And that's really what we did. That the friendship just became really, really strong. I remember just sitting there thinking, wow, this is like too good to be true because I, I just felt like we connected really, really well, like it was super effortless. As I got to know him and as I got to hear him just speak about life and, um, 
and God and different things like that. I, I remember just thinking, there's just something so special about this guy. Like, I don't know what his future is. I don't know uh, where he's going to go. Um, but I just knew that, there, that, that God, yeah, that he, his relationship with God was really, really deep. And my, my whole motto at the time was Matthew 6.33, which was seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. So I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just going to pursue God. You know, this is the Bible college that's on my heart. This is where I want to go for this season. If it's meant to be with us, God will work out the details. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so awesome. Then I found out that he was praying about going to these Bible schools that were very far away. So this could be the end of our friendship. <laughs> that's honestly what I thought. I, I thought like I didn't know him well enough for us to keep in touch right. if he would leave. A few of us just hung out uh, before he left, a few days before he left, and um, we prayed over him. And I, that was the most difficult prayer <laughs> I prayed over somebody because my intentions were, no, I don't want to pray you off. I want you to stay. <laughs> but I honestly didn't know what was going to happen. And um, part of me was just like, thanks a lot, God. Like, you know, you bring somebody that I connect with, like I've never connected with before into my life. And um now he leaves. So I moved to Kansas City and it was from there actually that our friendship went to the next level. He was very communicative actually after he left. More so than when he was local actually. Mm -hmm. We would start talking for an hour a day, two hours a day, sometimes three hours, you know, a night. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can imagine how close you get as friends where it starts to grow into something else. And so we became yeah. so close, even though we were, you know, miles and miles apart. I'm in the States, she's in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, it really brought us closer together. I had already wanted to go to the One Thing Conference in um, Kansas. And um, I especially didn't want to go that year because he was there <laughs> and I was like oh no I don't want to see him because then maybe my feelings will get stronger but then uh, just a couple things happened and I really felt in my heart no I think I'm supposed to go and so that was a really fun time of just spending quality time in person we pretty much stuck to each other like glue I think throughout that time I really enjoyed my time with him and stuff, but I still felt like I was in the friend zone. I'm not gonna think that this is gonna go anywhere. And so I had pretty much decided um, this that was it, you know, um, because I was like, he didn't, you know, he didn't make a move. He could have just made a move. And then it was after uh, she went back to Calgary that, you know, I started to, started to miss her. And, uh, <laughs> that's when I realized, you know what? <laughs> You know what, I've, I've got myself something good here and I, I, need to, I need to lock her in. He ended up like kind of ringing down my phone daily and, and uh, really connecting with me um, in a way that he hadn't before. And so I was like, huh? <laughs> What's going on? Um, yeah, and then when he popped the question, um, it was kind of surreal actually, cause it was like uh, one moment we were just friends and then the next second we were on the phone and I had said yes to being his girlfriend. So we took probably about five minutes to digest what had just happened. We officially became an item on uh, January 2015. And so from there on, you know, as we started to just go to that next level in our relationship, I realized, you know what? One year uh, at Bible College is really what's on my heart now. Like I feel like I'm, I need to go back to Calgary and uh, just be, you know, be with her here in Calgary. And mm -hmm. so that summer I came back and our relationship just, it just took off. It went to the, the next level. One of my friends is getting married in Europe. Because we were dating, I was like, hey, maybe this would be a cool trip to do together. Which worked so, out really good yeah. for me because, again, I'm brainstorming, how do I propose to her? I'm thinking like spots <laughs> in Calgary, maybe, maybe take her to Banff, like where, 
where do I propose, right? So I had to convince her yeah. um, that I wanted to go to Paris, not for anything romantic per se, yeah. but that I liked that underground train that they have direct from London under yeah. the ocean to Paris. So I had to convince her that it was like the engineering feat of this train that I wanted to try out <laughs> so that she wouldn't think that no, I was up to anything, yeah. right? Because again, I, I got to be tricky to surprise her. That was smart. That was a very it worked. smart story. It worked. That one, she actually bought it. I, I mean, I don't know it. how, but she bought that, that I actually yeah. enjoyed the train ride. Yes. And so, yeah, thought, so we... wow, what a nerd. And I figured, you know what, if I propose in Paris, there's no way that she can say no. And you know, the funny thing is my friends were kind of like saying all sorts of things to me. And I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, I know him. <laughs> He's not and even he, thinking about that yeah, right now. I was like, He's busy with work. Kinds of He's got a lot on his plate right yeah. now. And you just repeat what I've been telling you for the last <laughs> exactly. month and a half. And so, he yeah. He good that it wasn't going to happen. So, yeah. So, we're in Paris. <laughs> and, you know, the whole time I had the ring in my pocket, you know, tr just thinking of, you know, just waiting for the, the right opportunity, which, I mean, in Paris, I mean, every opportunity is the right opportunity. But I just wanted it to be just special between us. And I'm like, you know what? Well, what if... What if I just propose right on this bridge, you know? Like, yeah. this might be kind of cool. So I'm admiring it from a distance, and then I get on, and I was like, this bridge is ghetto! <laughs> because it had, like, a whole bunch of graffiti on it. It just looked beautiful from a distance, but then when we actually walked onto it, um, it was actually really vandalized. <laughs> and um, So as soon as she said that, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to propose to her here. We're going to keep on not going. <laughs> propose on the ghetto bridge. So then I, I walked into the room and I saw him. Um, he was kneeling um, down, um, like over the bed. And so I walked in and I was like, Ooh, oops, sorry. Because um, I noticed like he was... I don't know, possibly spending time with God or something. So I felt like I was kind of walking and in, interrupting. He, he actually had tears in his eyes and like kind of running down his cheeks and stuff. And, I, and then I was like, oh no, I was like, why are you crying? What's going on? And um, he, he said, um, I was just praying for you. I was like, what? Because I, I was actually feeling really ill. Um, so... I don't know, I just felt like just an overwhelming sense of just love and, and care. And that was really special for me to see him in his just quiet time when I wasn't there um, spending his time praying for me. Now I'm crying because <laughs> I see him crying and then he's telling me that he's praying for me. So I was just like, oh, you love me. <laughs> and, I'm and I'm thinking this is the perfect time to propose. Like this is this is the perfect time. Yeah. So and we then, were holding each other in a yeah. hug, and um, it was a really like special moment. Like we were both we were both in tears. We were both like hugging. I I, I forget what we were it's saying been... exactly, but I'm like, but you know what, I, Jenny, I have something to share. I said I have a confession. So when he said he had a confession. And so I was like, okay, whatever it is, like, love him through it, you know, <laughs> whatever he's about to say. Like, <laughs> yeah. Don't I was out. nervous. I was like, oh, get not in here. <laughs> I went down on my knee. I'm like, Jenny Nithias Warren, will you be my wife? And then I said, but before you answer, and I had to put her on pause because, I mean, I've been carrying the ring the entire trip. <laughs> And this was like the only moment where I didn't have it because my jacket was on the other side of the room yeah. and the ring was in the pocket. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And I see him run over and grab the, the ring. And I'm like, why didn't I have it on me? I had it the whole time. Why didn't I have it on me right now? What was I thinking? Grab my jacket, start like putting my hands through the pockets, finding the actual ring, come back, get back down on my knee, open yeah. it up and say, will you marry me? And then she had a really nice laugh. So and then, so then I went from tears to laughing hysterically <laughs> at him because <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Yeah. It was so special because it was so full of tears and laughter <laughs> and then more tears. And then suddenly we were engaged. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>
friends and church friends and just everyone, a lot of people saw it, you know, even before we saw it, you know, they saw us yeah. as friends and stuff, but they would just see us and be like, wow, there's there's something there. It was nice because some, some people had come up and said, hey, I was praying for you guys. and. And, you know, and just different, it was just surprising to see how many people were actually covering some of um, what was happening in prayer without us even knowing. And he had a lot of just moms at church just praying over him to find a wife, period, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and then my parents were uh, definitely um, praying and covering me um, to find um, the right person. Mm -hmm. so.